let's go back into the Old Testament in this lab and look at Lamentations 5, 19 to 22 and ask the question, what hope does anyone have or what hope does any church have or people have who have rebelled against God, have walked with him, it seems, for a season and then and then turned away? Can they return? How do they return? How does God return them? And we'll look at one key word and two key clauses and then broaden out our our look to confirm what we've seen. Father, many of us, all of us, wander from time to time. What is the hope we have that we will not wander away from you? Or if we have wandered, what is the hope that we could return? Show us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, Lamentations is, is one of the most tragic books in the Old Testament. Uh, God has wreaked havoc on the apple of his eye, Jerusalem. And this is the way the book comes to an end. But you, O oh Lord, reign forever. So Jeremiah, probably the author Jeremiah, is, is giving God glory, even though he's utterly puzzled at what God is going to do. But you, O oh Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures to all generations. And then he, he expresses his perplexity. Why do you forget us forever? Why do you forsake us for so many days? And then this is his remedy, if, if it could be. Restore to us, restore us to yourself, O oh Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us. So here's the key word. Restore us. And I could pull rank here, which is not good to do, because I know the Hebrew behind this, and literally it is cause us to just turn, cause us to turn to yourself, O Lord, and we will turn. Now, you can't see that. That is, you can't see the Hebrew. But my contention is, if you just think about the context here, you will see that's the meaning of restore. A couple of observations. Um, notice, it, it doesn't say restore us to the land. It says restore us to yourself. Oh Lord, the problem behind this plea is spiritual alienation from God. It's ongoing. The, the people have not yet turned to the Lord. They haven't been restored to the Lord himself. And we know, secondly, so the first thing we do is notice the word yourself. And we know, secondly, from other parts of the Old Testament that God does not despise those who return. The sacrifice, this is Psalm 51, the sacrifice of God, sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You will not despise. So if, if they had turned, if they had been restored in their heart to himself, he would receive them. Jeremiah wouldn't be crying out this way if they had already been restored because God doesn't despise a heart that turns to him so their heart hasn't turned and so that's what he's asking for cause us to turn that we may turn and the third way to get at that is to ask wow that sure puts a lot of uh, prerogative and initiative into the hand of God well any of you who've tasted how horrible it is to be 
drawn away by sin, knows that's our only hope if God is that sovereign. And so we ask Lamentations, is God that sovereign in your way of looking at things? And we we go back to chapter 3 and we read, Who has spoken and it came to pass unless the Lord has commanded it? Nothing gets spoken and achieved unless the Lord has done it. Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that good and bad come? In other words, God ordained all those horrible things that came upon Israel, and God does good. So sovereignty of God is assumed by this author when he says, O God, take your sovereignty and cause us to turn to you, restore us to you, that we may be restored. Cause us to turn, that we may turn. So my my answer to the question, what's the hope of a person who has strayed from God? There's only one answer. God must cause us to turn back. Now, can we confirm that by other passages? One of my favorites is here in Luke. I love this because it's just so hope-giving. Hope-giving. Simon, Simon, this is Peter about to deny Jesus. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, so you are going to deny me, your faith is not going to fail utterly. But, oh, it's going to fail temporarily. When you turn again, because you do, ter- you are going to turn away from me. You're going to deny me three times. But I have prayed, and my prayer is going to be answered, and the answer to my prayer is not any if, like if you return. Wow, I don't, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that you will have it within you to repent. No, the prayer of God is effectual for God's work in our lives. And so when you have turned, strengthen your brother's minister. That's a powerful statement that God turned him again. God is the only hope of turning us us Simons and Peters back to God. So how does God do it? How does God rescue us? He does it by interceding through Christ for us. He gives Christ to die for our sins, and then Christ prays for us, intercedes for us. So this Simon, Simon, Satan demanded to have you, but I have prayed for you. That's what Jesus does today, according to Romans 8, 34. But there's another means that God uses to bring us back. James 5, 19 to 20. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from the wandering, his wandering will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. God uses people. So when you pray for your child or when you pray for a friend who's wandering, pray for this person. Pray that God would bring that person into their life and then that God would do this. Cause them to turn, O God, that they may turn. That's our only hope. God's decisive, restoring, causing to return work. He does it by praying for us through Jesus, and he does it by sending people to come get us. 